Okay, so this is the Open Energy Monitor Level 3 bundle. Um, so we're going to work through all the, all the parts of the bundle and how they all fit together. So we'll start here with the heat meter. Uh, this obviously measures the heat output from the system and it needs to be installed on the primary pipework. Um, generally, the heat meter body, this bit here, needs to be installed on the flow but there'll always be a sticker on it to, um, to confirm that. So double check with the st sticker uh, where the heat meter needs to go. So by prim primary pipework, we mean the pipework um, coming from, going to the heat pump before any diverter valves on the flow and after any T's on, on, on the return, because we want to measure the full heat output from the heat pump for you know, heating and hot water. Take care to orientate the heat meter following the direction of flow on the body of the meter. So the heat meter, um, this 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 is the smallest heat meter we do. This has got uh, one. They have one inch parallel threads, and these are supplied with these three quarter inch um, water meter unions. And they these are flat face unions with a with a rubber washer. So they obviously screw on like that. Um, and then you have that's that's a three quarter inch BSP that you can just go onto. You don't need to use these supplied water meter unions, but whatever fitting you do use needs to have a flat face. Um, if you try and go onto these parallel threads uh, with the BSP female iron, you'll have a lot of trouble uh, sealing it up. Um, so that, that goes on the flow. And then on the return, we need to fit this return temperature sensor. You see it's marked with blue for cold. And this, this has got an M10 thread. And that then screws into this little uh, bushing that is included, which goes from um, M10 in there through to half inch. And if you've ticked the option, we include a T, which is a 28 millimeter um, to half inch, half inch T. So that screws into there, and that, that screws into that, and that will go onto a 28 mil pipe. We also do uh, 35 millimeter ones and press press versions as well. Okay, so I mentioned earlier, this is the smallest heat meter that we do. For larger heat pumps, you'll need a larger heat meter. So this is an example of a larger heat meter. Um, this one's DN20 and this one's DN2025. Um, so this has got inch and a quarter threads on it. Um, but the, the main difference here is you can see this smaller heat meter. It's got the temperature, a temperature sensor in the body. So if this body is uh, installed on the flow pipe, this temperature sensor here will be measuring the, the temperature in the flow. But this larger heat meter doesn't have any temperature sensors in the body. Both sensors are, are loose. So that just means that we're going to have to install two temperature sensors. So the one with, marked with a, a red tag there. This one here needs to go on the flow. And as the sticker says there, the heat meter body also needs to go on the flow. So when you're installing this, it'll be a case of screwing the M10 um, the M10 thread into there like that. You have to just push it past the washer, then screw it into the one inch, one inch T, and then put this in line with the heat meter, either before or or after. Doesn't matter. And then the return temperature sensor. Where's it gone? That one here. This then would go on the, you know, on on on, on the primary return. Um, just in case I have to fit, fit a second T. There you go. That would screw in there, and go on the uh, on the on the prime return. So the other connections on the heat meter are a two forty volt main connection. The me heat meter does have a battery in it, um, but that that that's just used for backup. It also needs a two forty volt supply that can go off a fuse spur or T off the the heat pump controller. Um, the other connection, which is labelled, is MBUS uh, data connection. This is how we read from the heat meter. So this needs to be connected into this MBUS reader. This will all be pre-wired. Pre um, the MBUS reader connects via USB into our data logger, the Emon Pi 2. And you'll see on the front of the, the Emon Pi 2, there's four, four USB ports. So it doesn't matter, it's just like your laptop. It doesn't matter what USB port you use, you can plug the heat meter into any of them. Um, the fact they're blue or black has no significance for this application here. So we plug the heat meter into one of them and then into another USB, we can then plug in the electricity meter part. 
So let's move on to the electricity meter. Um, so we use SDM 120 uh, electricity meters. And uh, if you've selected to have two electricity meters, say if you want to monitor the outdoor unit on the first meter, in the indoor controller, if you have like an indoor, if the pump is inside the um, property, you need to have a second meter to monitor that. So that, that heat pumps like Wiesmann, uh, Samson and Nibi, they all, all have indoor units. Um, if you're monitoring a, a valence, then you can just use the sing a single uh, meter because they have the circulator pump um, outside. Um, this will come pre-wired like this with all the, all the data connections wired in, but if you need to, you can extend extend this cable. Um, and if you have a look on the side here, there's a little diagram of how to connect, um, how to connect up the meter. But it's basically um, live goes into the bottom left terminal, live comes out of the bottom right terminal, and then the neutrals bust together at the top. Um, and then this is obviously the two different circuits. If you've selected the option for the electricity meter enclosure, then we'll include one of these metal enclosures that you can put the, the meters into. Um, alternatively, you can fit the meters into an existing country unit if you've got some spare some spare ways. And the electricity meters then go into a USB to RS-45 reader, which then connects into the EonPi data logger via USB connection. Um, so the other connections we have here is, uh, is that we have an Ethernet port um, to connect this device to the internet. You can either use Ethernet or Wi-Fi. Um, wired Ethernet is preferable because uh, it's more reliable. Um, you don't have to deal with the customer changing their Wi-Fi network. Um, but if you didn't, if Ethernet wasn't available, you can leave that disconnected and just uh, and just use Wi-Fi. Um, Wi-Fi setup is, is pretty straightforward. It's create, it, it creates an access point that you can connect to um, and enter in the customer's Wi-Fi details. That's all documented in the installation guide. So the final connection on this data logger is just the, the power supply. Um, it's a USB-C power supply, and that just plugs into the top, into the top there. Uh, and this, this antenna um, is used to receive data from the indoor temperature sensor. Um, which is here, and this has got just got two AA batteries inside it. Um, they'll be they'll be pre-fitted inside. You just need to put this um, somewhere in the living space. If it's quite close, as, as in if it's only a few rooms away, you can actually route this antenna inside here, which is a bit tidier. But we leave it uh, we leave it out of standard to give you the maximum range possible uh, to get around if it's a larger a larger house. If you are putting fresh batteries into any one TH temperature sensor. When the batteries are inserted, the little um, LED in the top corner there will light up for a few moments to indicate that the sensor is getting power. Automatically uh, paired, so there's no, no setup to do. Um, the same with all the heat meters and electricity meters, that they've all been pre-paired and set up, so the system's all plug and play. So since we're now using e one Pi 2 as the base station for the heat pump uh, monitor bundle, we can make use of the LCD display here to show the latest reading from the electricity meter and the heat meter. So the, the, the meters are just on the desk, that's why they're reading zero watts. But you can see they're updating every 10 seconds, we're getting data from the meters. To say if there was something, um, something went wrong and we were to unplug one of the meters, I've just unplugged the uh, RS-485 adapter from the electricity meter. We'll see here that the, the, it's, the seconds is counting up since the uh, data was received. Um, so as well as being a useful status to check that the uh, that the meters are connected, um, it's also useful to um, check the values because the, the the data on here will update much faster than the data on uh, online. Um, so you'll get instant feedback on what what the meter is reading. And the screen is also useful for checking to see if the internet is connected. So that's the Ethernet cable, which is currently not connected, and the Wi-Fi is not connected on here. So once the system is powered up and connected to the internet, you can scan the QR code there to that'll take you to a direct access URL to view the data, or you can log into emontcms.org uh, with the username that was provided when the kit was ordered to uh, to view the data. And once you're happy that all data is coming through um, through well, you can then um, optionally choose to submit the data to heatpumpmonitor.org um, site. Thanks for watching this overview video 
of the Open Energy Monitor Level 3 Heat Pump Monitoring Hardware. Please get in touch if you have any questions or would like any help during installation. Links to the user guide and other resources are linked in the description of this video.